Wednesday, the 21st of April, 2010. 35 degrees and 14 minutes north, 3 degrees and 55 minutes west. Fleur de Passion has been sailing for a week from Tunisia to arrive in the port town of al on the northeastern Mediterranean coast of Morocco. Today, the economy here depends primarily on fishing and tourism. In Morocco, the fishing industry catches over a million tons of fish per year. At a time when the world's economic borders are opening, Morocco seems well aware of the challenges to be met for its harmonious development. The Ministry of Fisheries has set out a strategy of growth which aims for a better social and professional status for its seamen. However, illegal trawlers are still actively fishing. They scour the sea bottom, even close to shore, and threaten the balance of marine biodiversity. Another serious problem comes from the tourism industry, which is expanding along much of the Moroccan coast at the expense of pristine marine areas. The Changing Oceans expedition has come here to begin work on its scientific mission. To test and improve a global map which shows the scale of cumulative human impact on the oceans. The scientists behind this map have joined our team after working for over five years to develop this project. This map will allow us to make important recommendations for the creation and management of marine protected areas along with other efficient strategies used for promoting healthy ocean ecosystems. Our team of six divers carries out its research at an average depth of 10 meters, using established methods and standard tools. So we have three teams of two divers each. Uh, one team is counting the size and abundance of the fish. One team is uh, looking at the uh, invertebrate and benthic community, and another team is gathering um, algae that we bring back to the boat to weigh. And in each case, we are getting estimates of the amount and the weight of, of these different levels of the food web, and from that we can get a sense of how healthy the community is. This metal square is dropped at random on the sea bottom every 30 fin strokes. Within the area it surrounds, invertebrates and sea stars are identified, measured and counted. Another team is busy collecting algae found growing on the rocky bottom. Five areas of about 30 square centimeters are carefully cleaned. The algae are then taken to the surface for analysis. Further down, we see Ben Halper, a leading member of our scientific team, performing counts of the fish species that occur within a given area. Back on board, Ben and Kim Selkoy make various observations on what they have collected. All of this data will be used to refine the map. Using this map, we can take a step back and have an overview of the combined impact of human activities, from fishing, tourism, shipping, 
pollution and agriculture to climate change. Um, we use the microscope to identify the species of the algae um, because there are many types of species that look very similar. So this helps us get a sense of the diversity of, of the algae, which is at the base of the food web. And, and that gives us a sense of um, other species that use the algae for food or shelter. That the diversity of algae often indicates a diversity of invertebrates and then fish. So it's a good indicator of the health of the system. The oceans, one of the last scientific frontiers on our planet. A place where expeditions still discover new species. What is their role in the global ecosystem? How do they react to environmental change? How does biodiversity change through our activities? So many questions that shroud the depths in mystery. In spite of new technologies which enable us to reach and exploit almost all parts of the ocean, we still have a very limited understanding of this environment. We disregard its fragile equilibrium. By sampling uh, many different sites uh, all across the Mediterranean, we have developed a picture of what changes can be expected in systems that are under different levels of pressure. So we can uh, essentially take the pulse of the ecosystems here in uh, Alosema. The first and perhaps the most noticeable change that we are seeing in these systems is that fish communities are showing clear signs of impacts from fishing. Fish abundance and diversity is noticeably lower than other marine protected areas that we sampled in the Mediterranean. Showing the most heavily affected areas in red, the more pristine ones in blue, unfortunately, the blue has all but disappeared from our map. The Changing Oceans expedition, our efforts are aimed at mitigating this sharp decline in the health of our oceans. And the Antonia Foundation and Changing Oceans uh, expeditions has a chance to spread this knowledge around the world and there are many simple ways of Im improving the way we manage our ocean but the knowledge is not out there yet so with a little bit of communication and education and a little bit of research, I think we can really have a big impact on the fate of our oceans. <laughs>